there are well over 500 titles available for our beloved Nintendo Switch, and sometimes some of these great ones get lost beneath the rocks. We are picking our way through the rubble and finding hidden gems with you. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here and we made a video on a couple of our favorite under the radar Switch games and you guys and girls were kind enough to share your favorite hidden gems with us as well. So we've picked 10 of your favorite under the radar hidden Switch gems and we're gonna list them off together. Now, a lot of these, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're like crazy obscure. It's just things that maybe got forgotten about a little easily. Um, we did play like all of these really uh, in between both of us. Not both of us played every single one, but I feel like we could jump into the list here now. Absolutely. And yeah, there was no criteria of like, oh, it has to have sold under this many copies or whatever. It just wasn't SteamWorld Dig 2 or Golf Story or Stardew Valley uh, or things of that level of exposure, I guess. Um, and a lot of them happen to be ports uh, that perform and play really great on the Switch given its portability. One of those being Thumper 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 from Atomic Comic who says Thumper is probably my favorite game. Improviser1 says Thumper is amazing and Chris Toro says got it in the first month of launch, still haven't beat it. It's a very challenging title. It is a, a game that reminds me um, a lot of Res, but with a little bit more, to me, a little bit more focus. Um, it is a rhythmic movement game that requires intense, uh, just dedication to the screen. You have to be zeroed in and you cannot let your mind waver, otherwise you will fail. But it is really intense, really cool, and sometimes make you feel like you're inside of a Satan machine. Yes, Jake played this for us, remember? And he has a video up on the channel that you can go check out. But yeah, rhythm games to me aren't super fun. I am bad at them, and I fully admit that. Uh, that's why Thumper just wasn't going to be for me. But it's awesome that uh, Atomic here uh, likes it. And, uh, you know, Jake liked it from what he played. It's just he did say it did get scary sometimes. It's just because it's one of those games that kind of, like, gets inside your head a little. And, and not because it's saying anything, uh, but just the, the, the like... The music, the vibe. It's 19.99 though. I don't think you can go wrong. It actually is fun. I got to play quite a bit of it on Switch, um, and yeah, it's it's a good one to start with. We will move on though to I'm not even gonna say your full name. Uh, it's Dirt Tip. <laughs> it says Dirt Tip Dirt Videos and whatever. Bull Boy is a great little game. Super cool art style. Zach, tell us about Bull Boy. So, Bulb Boy is $8.99. It is a uh, side-scrolling 2D horror adventure. Um, it, it gained quite a bit of popularity because PewDiePie covered it when it released initially on Steam, but it's got a very good style, and I feel like in the same way, Gabe, that you love Thimbleweed Park, these kind of narrative-driven experiences uh, are very cool on Switch, especially for a long car ride, a plane flight, a bus journey, things of that sort, and you get to basically be a light bulb. So, I don't know that you can get uh, any more eccentric than that. It's got very weird creatures. Um, there are puzzles. And uh, again, at $8.99, it's a low investment and a very unique title that fits perfectly with the Switch's portability. That moves us to Firestar3836, who says, I've loved playing Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. It is a fantastic co-op game as you upgrade your spaceship, which you are free to roam around, yelling over your friends, fighting for each position, would definitely recommend. And then Crazy Fireball 808 comes in and says, I love that game too. This game is really fun. I've played it on PC. It's available on Switch for $14.99. Exact same price as the Steam uh, version of it, so no Switch tax here. But the game is so, so fun. You are controlling the ship, and it is completely co-op. Uh, you get different uh, cannons and different like laser guns for each side of the ship, and you're all, you know, like he says, fighting over who's gonna control what. You gotta do uh, finding collectibles. Wanna use driving the ship while everybody else is manning cannons and other weaponry. It's a really fun game. And I had a ton of fun with it. So on Switch, I would imagine it would be even more fun. So I think you're going to want to grab local friends that you can play this with together. Uh, there is no online play, so it does have to be local. That's the one downside, but it's still a really, really good time. Yeah, and we have established firmly that co-op chaos is great on Switch. This one clocks in at $14.99. It's got a frog and a bunny. And I think, Gabe, you and I should play it next time I see you. Yes. 
Sam Trotter, though, says, Graf- uh, Graceful Explosion Machine. I love it. Uh, Koopa Troopa Poopa. <laughs> <That's a fantastic. laughs> Just bought that game a couple days ago, and it has to be the most satisfyingly enjoyable arcade game I own. It's like ASMR as a game. It looks good, too. Zach, you love Graceful Explosion Machine. I do. It's only twelve ninety nine. It is brilliant. Um, it is simple, but the execution is spot on, and I feel like it is a game that you can play repeatedly, even though it's got a very limited amount of interaction. There's only a couple weapons, and you're just going kind of back and forth. The way that they wrap the screen and the way that score and chaining uh, multipliers together is is the name of the game. Really, really addictive. The ASMR comment is, is kind of cool because it does have a really good soundscape. Um, it's got a very uh, easy on the eyes, but also beautifully bright graphical style. Um, it's not hyper pixelated, which is something you might expect from a game like this. It's got a little bit more um, geometric uh, mod modernness to it. Anyhow, uh, it's fantastic. I sung its praises from its initial launch way back in April of last year. Um, I think. I think it's very cool. I just can't wait for the sequel, Gabe, that you just invented, Grateful Explosion Machine. <laughs> Did I say that? Yes. I don't, no, I don't think... Okay. I mean, I might have. Fans of Resogun on PlayStation 4, if you're familiar with that game, this is kind of similar. Uh, I yes. feel like you would like this as well. And if I did say Grateful Explosion Machine, I need some money for the sequel. Arcane Shadow comes in with one of Gabe's favorite metroidvanias of recent memory i'm still gonna stick with axiom verge one of the best games i've ever played and it pains me when you show it at the beginning of the video but don't put it on the list well arcane shadow we're putting it on this list it's 19.99 and gabe is obsessed well arcane i am the one that edited that video and i put it on there specifically because i love the game so much and i am glad that you brought it up now it's like zach said one of my favorite metroidvania games in recent memory it's done so perfectly the formula has been perfected with axiom verge the boss battles, the weapons, the music, the exploration, it's all super on point. And while it is available on other platforms and has been for quite some time, taking it on the go with you on Switch is fantastic, and I love it. Absolutely. Tyler Hoos comes in with a game that I loved, and it is Tumble Seed. He says, I wish Tumble Seed got more love. It's an incredibly well-made game, insanely hard, but the controls are so amazing, and the HD rumble is great. This one, I feel loses a little bit of love because of its difficulty. It is insanely challenging, potentially the hardest game on Switch. Not to say it's not worth uh, the effort, but it is really, really tough, and that makes it a little bit tricky to recommend. But if you're down for difficulty, $14.99, it's completely unique. It almost makes the Switch feel like a tablet pinball machine or something far more mechanical and physical than it, it really is. Um, it's just hard as balls. I've seen some insane runs of this game. Getting to the top of the mountain, it's a roguelike, um, but my rogues all die in the first stage. So to, to progress past the, the early bits of this game is very tricky. I imagine it's insanely rewarding to do, to do that. Um, it is very clever. They've got cool power-ups, a really fun art style. It almost reminds me of like a pad upon loco roco fusion if they were on like super steroids and made to be tougher than dark souls yeah it's a little too tough i, I personally couldn't get into it I-, I didn't enjoy it but you know i'm glad that you like it uh, we can move on to one of our favorite commenters we see him very often trent welch who with now has who we know is adele it's like we know that now Shantae, mm-hmm. Half Genie Hero, is the game I feel has gone into the radar. It's an amazing platforming game. And then Sean Diamond comes in with Agreed. Bought it a month or so back, and there's a physical version coming soon with some art and the soundtrack and all of the DLC for $40. And I can't wait to pick it up. Great game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, personally, I would buy it digitally, so you don't have to swallow the physical price. Um, although I know a lot of people do enjoy having cartridges, and they're you know because of that, they are more expensive. Um, but you can grab this game for $19.99 on the eShop. It is a very beautiful um, action platformer. It's got great style. It has been on other platforms, um, but this one incorporates HD Rumble, and it has, I think, some really good boss fights. So if you're down for that kind of um, platformer with story and uh, power-ups and things like that, pretty darn cool. Shantae has been a franchise that that gets a lot of um, sort of cult love 
and WayForward Games are a really great developer, so I think this definitely belongs on the list. Absolutely. The Bahoopla Master says, is Cameco under the radar? Cameco is one of the best five bucks I've ever spent. Curtis comes in and says, I love Cameco. Uh, Preston Smitch says, Cameco is amazing. I think the reason it's not on here is because it's known for being amazing and not as under the radar. For $5, you don't even really have to be that amazing to be worth it. And the fact that Cameco comes in with something clever and crafty and keeps it at that $5 price point, it's an easy recommendation. I personally did not love this one uh, as much as most, but I know it has a lot of uh, positive reviews behind it, so I wanted to make sure that we included it here. Yeah, and you know they do a pretty good job of explaining the game's greatness here. And like you said, that price point is just so difficult to beat. Uh, you're probably seeing gameplay now, and you can see if it's for you. But yeah, you, know, you can't expect a whole lot for the price point, and this delivers a bunch of fun. So I'm all for it. We will move on though to Wani Noko says Oxen Free. I love Oxen Free, Zach. You know this. When it originally came out, it was early in the year, and it was an early game of the year contender in my mind. It is a story-based adventure game. It has some supernatural elements. There's ghosts, there's possessions. You don't know what's going on. It's Creepy Island, and there's a whole lot of fun. Very beautiful. Uh, the music in it is something that stands out to me as well, and the characters are really good. You kind of start relating to them and their relationships. It's a really fun time. It's not that long, and uh, for $20, pretty good. Yes, it's a little too spooky for me, but I have... Definitely thought about playing it. There's a lot of good uh, point-and-click, side-scrolling, narrative-driven adventures coming to Switch. We didn't want to focus on anything that isn't out already, uh, but if you look at that list of upcoming releases, you'll find one in particular that I think will scratch a similar itch. In the meantime, uh, go itch yourself with Oxenfree. It is basically a, uh, a beautiful back-scratcher, as Gabe described, and it's a great fit for Switch, and it comes in at a pretty decent price point of... 1999. That brings us to the last game of the list, number 10 from the Awesome Peanut, which is Mighty Gunvolt Burst. It's pretty fun, although I still haven't beaten it yet. Pretty difficult. And this game uh, calls back to Mega Man. It incorporates uh, the character from Mighty Number no. 5, which yeesh, but this one is, is far better than that game. Um, I played it for a little bit. It's not really my style, but I know a lot of people love it. There seems to be a solid amount of content, um, and uh, like I said, it, it does harken to Mega Man, so if you're waiting for those Mega Collections, which I'm pretty darn pumped for, um, you can pick up Mighty Gun Volt Burst. There is additional DLC, um, which is kind of cool. There's a demo available, and the game is only $9.99, so low investment, lots to do. Get on it if that is your cup of coffee. Coffee's bad. Don't drink coffee. I prefer tea, but I was trying to, uh... Trying to mix it up like we did with this list, mixing up the Switch games that normally get a lot of the uh, the airtime, and we will run through that list one more time. You got Thumper, Bulb Boy, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, Graceful Explosion Machine, Axiom Verge, Tumble Seed, Shantae Half Genie Hero, Kamiko, Oxenfree, and Mighty Gun Volt Burst. Let us know if you've got any extras to add, or if this video inspired you to check out any of these games, and if you did what you thought of them. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Hopefully, some hidden fun was found for everyone, and we hope you have fun with this video and the rest. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch and its games library. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash the Switch Force. Talk at us, participate in polls, and see Gabe's zigzag mustache. Until next time, everyone, have a fantastic day. We love you. For myself and Gabe, Switch Force, out. <laughs>